This video is brought to you by premiumbeat.com. So I'm always looking for small, unique ways to increase the value of our After Effects project. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna talk about how to create unique creative based type backgrounds inside of After Effects. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So, you know, I'm in the splurge of creating creative type based tutorials inside of After Effects, and this is definitely one of them. So essentially what's cool about this tutorial is that you're gonna be able to take any object inside of After Effects. So it could be a custom made circle or your logo, and you're gonna be able to easily repeat that as a background, and we're gonna do some really cool effects to our work. But before we get into this video, I wanna say thank you to premiumbeat.com for sponsoring this video. Premium Beat is a royalty free music provider for your creative video and motion graphic projects. They have an extremely popular library with thousands of songs to choose from and they have a very easy in-depth search and menu filter system that allows you to quickly find the best songs for your video. So for your next video project, be sure to check out premiumbeat.com for your royalty free music. So let's go ahead and jump into our tutorial, let's get started. Alright so here we are in After Effects and we're going to create a background like this and what makes this background so dynamic? is first of all we're gonna be able to do pretty much any objects we want to do but also it's nice and glowy and also as you get further out to the edges our background seems to get more out of focus so that is really cool a lot of cool techniques in our background tutorial today so let's go ahead and jump over to our main composition and we'll get started so the first thing we're going to want to do is create the object that we want to turn into our you know patterned background so very rarely we start off with a blank composition, but we're doing that in this video. And what we'll do here is grab the pen tool here at the top and we'll click on the word fill. We'll set this to none and click OK. And we'll set the stroke to solid color and click OK. And all we're gonna do here is click a point, hold down shift on our keyboard and click down another point. So we have a straight line like this. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come here to the pan behind tool and control double click the pan behind tool. All right, so boom, that's right in the center. And we'll come here and grab our selection tool and we'll just put this right in the center of our composition like this. And it's very important that your object, whatever you're using a circle, you know, whatever, needs to be in the center of your composition. And then we'll grab our shape layer, we'll go up to edit, duplicate, we'll hit R on our keyboard for rotation and we'll set this to 90 degrees. So boom, perfect rotation in the center of our composition. So what we'll do is we'll grab our shape layers here and we'll go to layer, pre-compose, and we can call this you know object and click OK. Then what we're gonna want to do is go into that composition, go up to composition and click on composition settings, and we'll set the width to 400 and the height to 400. So we'll have a perfectly even box here, click OK. So we'll zoom in here, boom, there's that. Okay, awesome. We'll go back into our main composition and there's our cross. So if our object selected, we'll go up to effect, stylize, and we're gonna grab motion tile and we'll increase the output width to go across and the output height and we might need to come back and revisit this. So by increasing these two values, you'll be able to you know, create as many copies as you want. And so let's go ahead and turn this into a 3D layer and let's start making this a little bit more dynamic. And this could slow down your computer by a little bit so you might need to lower down your resolution when working with this. So we'll just do that really quick. And from here, what we're gonna do is hit R on our keyboard for rotation and we'll set our X rotation to like negative 54. And we'll come here to Y rotation, set that to negative 24, and also our Z rotation to negative 24 as well. And this will give us just a nice cool creative angle for our crosses. And what we're gonna do here is we'll need to continue to increase the output width and height. And then we'll hit PR and keyboard for position. And we just need to, and we just gotta reposition our uh, you know objects here. So we'll kind of move this over to the right so we can you know, cover up some of the you know black space over here. And then I'll bring this up. So we can continue to just offset this by a little bit. Okay, so good enough. So now I want to be able to stylize this and actually make this, you know, look good like this. And this is very important. So what we can do is go back into our object layer and we can go to layer, new, uh, you know, adjustment layer, go to effect, generate, fill. And this can change the color to any object that we want. So I can do like a purplish color, click OK. Awesome, so that's all we'll do in this composition. And bam, it'll update really easily. And then we'll go to Effect, Stylize, and we're gonna grab Glow. And then we'll keep the settings all the same and we'll duplicate our Glow effect by going up to Edit, Duplicate. And we'll set our Glow Radius up to about 60. And then we'll duplicate the Glow effect again and we'll set this up to 260. 
the glow radius on the third duplicate. So boom, we have a nice subtle glow effect here on our objects, but I want this to stand out a little bit more. So we'll go up to layer, new, solid, and I'll call this background. And we'll select the color here, and instead of it being complete dark, let's go ahead and make it like an offset black. So it's like very dark gray and click OK. And create a new solid and bring this layer underneath our objects. And this will help make the glow effect pop a little bit more. All right, so things are coming together, but we got to make this stand out a little bit more. It's just kind of meh in here. So what we'll do is go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer. And we'll rename this layer to Blur. And then we'll come here and grab like the pen tool here. And we'll just click a point off the composition and go to the other side of the composition. It'll be a straight line like this. It can be a little bit crooked. It doesn't have to be perfect. I like that. Click down and we'll just, you know, do something like this. So we're kind of creating this rotated box in a way. It doesn't have to be amazing or anything. Just pretty abstract. And then we'll go up to effect, uh, blur and sharpen. And we're going to grab the camera lens blur. And we'll set our blur radius to about 11. And then we'll hit M our keyboard for our mask path and we'll set this to subtract or mask one. And now we're getting that nice blur here. And then of course, make sure you hit F on keyboard for mask feather and we'll set this up to like 200. And then we'll go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and we'll go up to effect noise and grain. And we're gonna grab noise and set this to 10% and uncheck use color noise. And of course we want to be able to animate our background. So we'll grab our object layer and we'll go ahead and add a keyframe for title center at our first frame here. And we'll come here to the end of our you know, composition, we'll say four seconds. And we'll grab the tile center and we can just move the X value over a little bit, you know, any direction. And this will allow us to animate our background uh, very easily. And now you have the opportunity to add in titles or logo animations into this background and everything looks really nice. Um, and if you want to change out the object, it's very easy to do this. So here we are in our normal composition and say if we want to bring in like a logo, you know, we can have our logo be, you know, the object. So I'll bring that down. I uh, can easily change our color to whatever color we want. So if we want blue, that's totally fine. Of course, I'm just being abstract with this. And now we have our logo updated in here. And you can also do like a hollowed out circle or any type of object and you can animate these as well within those compositions. And so the opportunity to make a really cool, unique background is out there with this technique. And as we conclude this video, I want to give a huge shout out to the very best After Effects templates out there. So if you're looking to save a tremendous amount of time and produce high quality work, I highly recommend taking a look at my favorite After Effects and Premiere Pro templates. It's all here on one page, which I will drop this link in the video description below. And these templates range from transitions to animation presets, motion graphic templates, to titles, and tons of other amazing assets. So if you want to check out some of the best After Effects and Premiere Pro projects, that link will be in the description. So that concludes our tutorial on creating creative-based backgrounds inside of After Effects. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and are able to implement it into your work. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. Always be creative.